Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back. We are nearing the All-Star break here in our 1976 season. As I mentioned, I have uh, gone ahead and put some offers out uh, to some of my players, so we'll start seeing uh, the answers to those cropping up here soon. The uh, biggest news that happened uh, here between videos, uh, I have not moved any days, but I went ahead and made a deal. One of my uh, relievers uh, was 30-year-old Al Fitzmorris. Not a bad pitcher at all, but uh, only one real good pitch. Um, he had had a decent year as a starter before we started here. Uh, went 3-2 and two in 37 relief appearances with a 4-1-7 last year. And he's had nine at nine uh, outings this year, a 1-3-5 ERA. Not bad, but, uh, you know, I'm not really keen on his ratings and the fact he was up for a contract extension. Um, yeah, I guess he was unhappy that he got traded, which is okay because um, he's not my problem anymore. And we picked up a 26-year-old outfield first baseman, which, honestly, because I traded away... Uh, and all I did is I shopped him, and this is uh, one of the guys. Had a long list of people that were interested, and I looked at a couple of players, but uh, this was the guy that I decided to go with. Pretty pretty good ratings, uh, although he's not hitting well. He doesn't appear to be a, a dominant hitter. But he can play first and left field. So what I'm projecting here is, uh, he signed for, uh, actually he is signed through this year, so I actually need to offer him an extension. Uh, 174 to 244, yeah, we're not going to do that. How about 194? Two forty. how about 220? Alright, well, well, you know, at least he negotiated. So here's my thinking on him. Uh, he can he can start in left field now, which he will, because he's a pretty good defensive outfielder. Uh, he appears to have a little bit of pop in his bat. If we can get him back up to where uh, he needs to be, uh, he's just been very inconsistent. This is his third team this year. Uh, he started with the Mets, traded to the Pirates. Uh, in fact, let's see what he was traded for. Uh, Bob Moose and Bruce Hurst. That was probably a pretty good pickup. 18-year-old Bruce Hurst. And then traded for Fitzmorris to our team. So two trades within three months. I wonder what his morale is. Uh, actually, it's pretty good. Uh, he, he likes the train. You know, I guess he's happy that he's wanted. Um, so here, here's my thinking again. Uh, he can start in left with Hank Aaron being hurt. And you know what? If I couldn't have Hammer and Hank, I could get the Hammer. And I did not know that was his nickname until I was looking at him. Which I thought, well, that's kind of cool. Um, so he's going to pencil in to start in left. That gives Mallory the ability to slide back to back up Otis in center. And then... Fairly, I'm going to let go to free agency after this year, and Milner could then move over to first base, barring any issues. So I thought he filled a couple of roles that would be helpful. Um, I'm very surprised the owner has not been happy with Hal McRae in right field as an upgrade. I mean, he's only hitting 377, but I guess because it's, you know, not a addition to the team I was hoping Milner could play right field excuse me sorry about that just had breakfast um, but you know that is what it is so we'll see how that goes uh, I'm hoping you know I'm hoping Milner does a lot better than that uh, 132 156 that he's had this year um, Probably based on those numbers, I would be really ecstatic to get something in that 250 range if he could put some power numbers up. You know, 20, 20 91 would be pretty nice. Um, just trying to look. I, I don't know. Well, yeah, he had. He wasn't a full time player. He didn't start a lot. Just, you know, he had a stretch of years. 
270s. So, you know, if I could get something in that 270 range with, you know, 15 to 20 homers, I think I'd be pretty happy with that. Um, anyway, we'll see. So, I, I picked him up with the, with the, you know, once I saw he could play first and left, I said, well, he fills a left field need now and can replace fairly next year because I don't think Mallory's going to be my, uh, my answer there. And I honestly don't have anybody at first base. I do have this guy coming up, uh, Karel DeLue. Um, he's in double-A. I don't know if he'll develop, but, you know, that's, that's really my only guy at first base. So, uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and make some moves in the rosters. I usually do that once a month. That way it gives them enough time to really prove themselves. Quisenberry has picked up a little bit. Good. Brian Murphy. Tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and second, third, and short. I don't want to cut him because he could still be a defensive replacement. Um, Jack's three and three with a two nine seven. I just don't think he's ready to come. I mean, it says he's ready, but you know what? I, I just, I just don't think so. I and I don't know that he would be. Very unhappy with the team record. Extreme fly ball pitcher. All right, so let's come and dial these guys up. All right, there we go. All right, so big week for us here. Remember, we play the Twins coming up in the next series, and then Texas, which uh, that that's going to be, you know, we don't want them making up any ground on us, but we need to make up some ground on Minnesota here. So let's go ahead and play till next week. We'll probably stop with some... Uh, Oh, another trade proposal. So we'll look at that in a second. Uh, well, let's look at that now. So the Cubs, Jack Hyatt for Bob Stinson and Jack Morris. Uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. Well, we'll discuss the trade with you, but we're going to take Jack off the table completely. Uh, no, 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 no. How good is Hyatt? Yeah, I don't know that he's... He's not all that in a bag of chips. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to just clear the offer. Not interested. Thank you very much. We're going to reject that trade. Back up to next week. Another message. Looks like they ended up making a deal with Detroit. Different players, but... Day-to-day -day injury, one week. We'll let him ride out here. I'll cancel next week. Wow, another trade proposal from Oakland. Charlie Sands for Lee Lee. Wow. Come on, man. You're going to have to send me a, like, all pro, 
All Star. Yeah, I'm I'm not feeling that, man. All right, well let's at least discuss the trade. Maybe I can get something out of it. Uh, I really don't like either one of those guys <laughs> going. Um, yeah, I, I just don't see any way to make that happen. We're going to reject the trade. Thank you. Sunday, let's go ahead and finish the week. All right, so here we go. Let's get into the standings. We're full four-game win streak. But still two and a half back. I guess that means they probably beat us in the uh, in the series there. And yep, they took two out of three from us. So and close games, close games. And then we swept the Rangers. Ah, that's disheartening. All right, first game we give up. Uh, we actually took a three to two lead and then blew it in the ninth. Gidry, two runs in six innings. Mingori did well. Herbowski blew the save and got hooked with the loss. Uh, yeah, I'm not not a big fan of that guy. I like his mustache, but not a big fan. Milner's first game, he hit a home run, though. That's positive. Perkins got his, a, his first home run of the season as well. Now, Perkins was the catcher that I called up. Okay, and I don't know if you guys saw that. I called up a catcher. Uh, from my triple A team. Patek two for four, two for five for Burleson, three for five for Brett. Milner with the pinch hit. Mallory started in left field. Bly Levin. Alrighty. Four to three again. Minnesota came back and from a 3-2 deficit and scored two runs in the eighth inning. Flanagan got the win this time. Splitorf got the loss. Home run by Larry Heisel. One for four, two for three, two for four with two RBIs. Perkins got the start behind the dish, one for three. Milner started in left field, went 0 for one. He got, did he have some walks? Oh yeah, two walks, okay. So he got on base twice. That's good. Seven to three win. Leonard was a, you know, he just did what an ace does. You know, he comes in when, uh, you know, you've lost two in a row and you need the win and he got one. Eight hits, three runs in nine innings for 10th win of the season. Milner, another home run. So our new guy paying some dividends. Uh, two home runs already. He's hitting 556 fours in the early going of his career as a Royal. So I'm liking that trade right now. Brett Stinson, Patek, and Otis all with stolen bases. Hey, Tink. Brett got caught again. Two for five. Let me go into uh, set game strategy. Stealing bases. How about we dial you back a little bit and conservative on base running. There we go. To quote uh, to quote the Yankees owner in uh, in the in the movie sixty one. If you haven't seen it, very good movie about the uh, 61 home run season for uh, Roger Maris and uh, the Maris and Mantle chase that year. Uh, he says, uh, you know, Roger, we're not paying you for, for to hit for average. We're paying you to hit home runs. George, you're going to hit for average, so just hit some home runs while you're at it. <laughs> that's, the, that's the deal here, mullet. All right, so that should have him fixed up a little bit. Otis, two for four with two RBIs. Look at the bottom of the order here. Two RBIs, Fairley with one, Milner with two, uh, Stinson with one. Now, it says he's hitting, oh, he's hitting 165 for the season, but, you know, he's hitting pretty good for us. 15 to one, we pound out 17 hits. It's always nice to see some crooked numbers on the board. Four, five, and four. Busby got 
had a great game and a lot of run support. Brett stole another base. Patek, 30th of the season. Burleson got caught. No home runs in this game for us or them. Patek, four RBIs. Burleson, four RBIs. Brett, an RBI. Two RBIs for McRae. Everybody had an RBI with the exception of Otis. Which, hey, you know, I guess that nobody was on base when he got up to bat. That's an incredible game. I'd like to see a few more of those. 6-3. to three, Bryles got the win. Herbowski didn't blow a save. Stinson, his second homer of the season. Brett, 2-4. for four, Two more RBIs. Milner, 2-4. for four. Stinson, 2-4 two for four with two RBIs. I'm really liking that stint that uh, that Milner trade right about now. And nine to two, Gidry gets his fifth win of the season. Mingori and Bird hold down the fort. Perkins his second homer. Milner his third homer of the week. Is that asinine or what? He's like probably taunting Brett in the in the dugout and the locker room. <laughs> Brett, three for five, but no RBIs. You know, a lot of multiple hit games all at the top of the order. Fairly three for four. Milner, one for three with the homer and two RBIs. Perkins, nice game. Very nice game. All right, so that's going to get us up to the all-star break. Uh, let's take a look at our emails. We already went through a few of these. Okay, so Jim Wolford signed a $51,600 contract extension for one year. A five-hit day for Rennie Stennett with the Pirates. J.R. Richard got traded. Wow, to the White Sox. Wow. Wow. Oh, you know what? And they got Mike Scott, who actually became an Astro in real life. And I apologize for all the noise in the background, but we do have real life going on at the house. All right, American League voting. You can scan through that. Brett still holding on to the lead at third. McRae's still in third in left after sliding down. A or, let's see, Otis in second. Herbowski still in third after getting knocked out of the top spot there. Johnny Bench goes over the 2.2 million vote mark. Johnny Grubb, that's a close race for center field. Only uh, 3,000 votes separating uh, those two guys. Tom Seaver goes over the 2 million vote. And the All-Star game is announced. So for the American League, Vita Blue from Oakland, 11-5, 2.09 ERA. This is kind of good for a month-in wrapped up, isn't it? Burt Blylevin, 6-4, but a 2.11 ERA. Tommy John. Under 500 this year, you remember he was the big free agent catch the first season, but it's still a 235 ERA. Dennis gets a pick from our team, 10 and 4 with a 2.15. Gaylord Perry, Frank Tanana, Terry Forster, Hrabowski makes the All Star game again with 16 saves. Gossage, Sparky Lyle, Carlton Fisk, and Thurman Munson at catcher. Daryl Porter is going to be the third catcher. Mike Hargrove, Bobby Gritch, George Brett starting at third base. Hal McRae makes it in right field. Over on the National League side, Don Gullett, 14 and 5 this year. Jerry Kusman, 11 and 4. Steve Rogers, 12 and 6. Tom Seaver, Tug McGraw. 13 saves for Gene Garber. 
Johnny Bench, 325 and 20 homers in the first half of the season, so he'll be chasing 40 homers this year. Gary Carter and Ted Simmons. Gary Carter, of course, if, is, uh, I think he's still an announcer, uh, but he became an announcer for baseball. Bob Watson went into the front office with the Astros. I think he's still there. Mike Schmidt, 262. That's not great, but 13 homers. Cesar Geronimo, Ellis Valentine, Ken Griffey. Uh, a trade between Milwaukee and Texas. Milner, our first week player of the week. 556, six RBIs, three home runs, the first week in the in the American League after coming over from Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah, I would say that turned out pretty well for at least the first week. I'm not expecting that clip to continue, but hey, uh, he's off to a good start in a Royals uniform. Ted Simmons, Player of the Week in the National League, 538, one homer, eight RBIs. And power rankings, we climb a little bit more to number seven. Minnesota climbs back up to number nine, and that's uh, indicative that we are still two and a half games behind them and lost two out of three to them. So let's see, who do they have coming up? Oakland, and then another series with us, and then California. California is like the series everybody's hoping for, I think, because they're not doing well this year. 21 and a half out. And then, of course, we have California and then the Twins and the Sox and then the Rangers again. So, you know, that uh, that twin series is going to be crucial, but we've got to stretch here. We've got to win a bunch of these games through the end of the month. So let's... Uh, Let's auto play to that, and then we'll finish just today. All right, so the National League beats the American League nine to five. Uh, let's check pitching. You know, Vita Blue, one inning, one run. Dutch went a perfect inning, no hits, no runs, uh, one strikeout. Tanana got the loss, didn't record an out, and gave up four runs. Or was hooked for four runs at least. Forster got hit. Herbowski also struck out three in his inning, so he actually looked pretty dominant. Uh, so our guys looked pretty good out of the out of the uh, pitching staff. Seaver, Matlack got roughed up. Everybody else went pretty pretty good for them. McGraw gave up a run. Uh, Brett had an error. Hera and Don Baylor on the base paths. So <laughs> what would have been funny is if Brett would have had like three home runs in the All-Star game, you know, and he can't hit them in the season for us. Uh, Soderhelm hit a home run. Uh, Foster and Carter for the National League. Baylor a perfect two for two. Rice 0 for two. Brett 0 for 3 with an RBI. Gritch 2 for 4. McRae 0 for 1 in his pinch hit opportunity. Big hitter uh, Foster with 2 RBIs. Carter with a pinch hit home run and 2 RBIs. 2 for 3 for Dave Conception. So there's your National League, American League All-Star game. And, you know, this, you know, used to be really good to watch. I mean, the All-Star game actually used to mean something because the players weren't making a ton of money. And you figure, you know, your, your, your bottom-end contract, I mean, you can see here using the, the financials is about $55,000, which compared to what players make today is nothing. You know, I mean, the, I think the low-end baseball contract now is over $300,000. So it used to take them six years to make that much money. And, you know, they'd get twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars for making an all-star game. Uh, you know, so they might make almost as much in a, in, just for making the all-star game as they would make for the whole season. 
and even your even your top end players that were making you know a hundred two hundred thousand dollars you know which was you know big money back then you know forty you know thirty or forty thousand dollars was a big bonus so you know it meant a lot to make the all-star game and they played like that money meant something because at that time it did and you know now unfortunately they make so much money in all the sports that they don't care about these all-star games and and they just don't have the meaning that they used to have uh let's see mccovey asking to be traded 38 years old i am not interested in him we'll go ahead and finish out the uh the week trade proposal from minnesota Um, Glenn Borgman, 26 years old, not hitting very well, but he has decent ratings, no power, which is okay. He's got a really good arm, very good defensively. Now, who do I have there right now? I called up Craig Perkins, but it's still Stinson that's starting. Um, he's got a really good eye, avoids K's. 70 walks last year, 100 point higher OBP than average, no speed, so he's going to be at the bottom of the order, so it won't really be dealing with I'm going to look at this guys, let's go ahead and put a cut in here, I'll come back and we'll pick up right here in the next video um yeah i need to give some thought to this it won't be for morris if i can work a deal but we'll see so thanks for checking us out and we'll be back here in the middle of this uh possible trade uh coming up and i certainly hate to trade with a team that i'm chasing uh thanks for checking it out see you back here uh, next time